Today, we're gonna take a look at some tips on how to switch to Linux the right way, and then we're gonna run through an actual Linux installation. Let's go. Get used to free and open source software on Windows or Mac OS before switching to Linux. Most normal programs that are available on Windows and Mac OS also have Linux versions, but not all. For example, Adobe products and Microsoft Office don't support Linux, at least not yet. So before switching to Linux, install and get used to free and open source software on Windows or Mac OS, so that you don't have a hard time adjusting to different software when you switch to Linux. LibreOffice, Blender, OBS, Kdenlive, GIMP, and tons of other free and open source Linux programs have Windows and Mac OS versions for you to install and use. Now you can of course run Adobe, Microsoft Office, and tons of other Windows-only programs on Linux through the Wine compatibility layer, which can be very useful in some cases like games and certain software, but like on any other operating system, native Linux programs will always run better than programs written for another operating system running through a compatibility layer, and Wine doesn't always work. Choose a user-friendly distro. If you're a beginner, I actually have a video about the best Linux distros for beginners, but I recommend choosing Ubuntu as your first distro. Also, make sure that the distro you choose supports your hardware. Ubuntu is one of the best options regarding hardware support, and also supports Secure Boot, so you can leave that option on in the BIOS. And no matter how much Linux elitists will try to say that more advanced distros are the best, don't pick something more advanced like Arch as your first distro. It's going to be a bad experience and often leaves beginners with a bad impression of Linux as a whole. Also, most Linux distros, especially the more user-friendly ones, don't require any terminal knowledge to use at all. You can use the fully featured graphical user interface, which we call a desktop environment, for everything. Speaking of desktop environments, the most user-friendly desktop environment is GNOME. It's very simple, beautiful, and easy to use, although it's not as customizable as other options. Ubuntu comes with a customized version of GNOME by default, which makes it even better for beginners. Stick with one distro for a little while, and then distro hop as much as possible. One of my biggest mistakes was staying on one distro for too long. Stick with your first distro for about a few months and just get used to it. Get used to the different desktop and the different workflow. And while you can use the desktop environment for everything, especially with a complete desktop environment like GNOME or KDE, I recommend learning the command line because it's a faster and more convenient way of doing things on any operating system, whether that be macOS, Windows, or Linux. Although the Linux command line is much more useful than the Windows command prompt or the macOS terminal. Don't expect Linux to be like Windows. Seriously, don't. Linux is a different operating system and looks and functions very differently from Windows. Also, don't expect Linux to run exe files natively. Linux has its own packaging formats, which I have a video on, but namely dev files for Debian and distros based on Debian, RPM files for Fedora, OpenSUSE, and distros based on them, and a few others. exe files won't run on Linux unless using a compatibility layer like Wine. Do you expect macOS to look and function like Windows? Do you expect exe files which are written for Windows to run on macOS natively? Of course not. It's a different operating system. Same for Linux. You can also dual boot if you need Windows or macOS for certain things, but don't dual boot for too long. Dual booting is great when you're starting out. You can use Linux as your primary operating system and use Windows or Mac OS if you need to use Microsoft Office or any Adobe products, or maybe you want to play a game that Linux doesn't support yet, or anything like that. But don't do it for too long. Otherwise, you may just boot into Windows or Mac OS if you have a problem on Linux, and then just use Windows or Mac OS for a while, and not really learn much about Linux. Once you can, remove Windows or Mac OS and use Linux as your only operating system. Use Snaps and Flatpaks. There's many packaging formats on Linux, but I really recommend Snaps and Flatpaks because they are, to put it simply, apps that run on any Linux distro. There's also App Images, which are portable apps that can be installed and run anywhere as long as LibFuse 2 is installed. 
Now, Ubuntu has snaps enabled by default, but not flat packs. Snaps should give you all the apps you need, but if you want to enable Flatpaks and Flathub, you can go to the official Flatpak setup page which will be linked in the description. To summarize it, first download and use free and open source software on Windows and Mac OS so that you get used to it. Then choose a user-friendly distro like Ubuntu, make sure it supports your hardware, and then stick with it for a few months. And don't expect Linux to be like Windows because it's a different operating system. If you need Windows or Mac OS for certain tasks, dual boot. But don't do it for too long. Try to go Linux exclusive as soon as you can. And finally, install and use Snaps and Flat Packs. Now that we've covered some tips on switching to Linux, let's actually install Linux. For this demonstration, I'm going to be dual booting Mac OS and Ubuntu on this 12 inch Retina MacBook from early 2015. So I have my USB drive ready, I have the plug. Uh, power plug in, so let's boot in. Okay, we are now booted in, so first thing we're gonna wanna do is download the Ubuntu ISO and a tool called Belena Etcher to flash the ISO to the USB. Okay, so first let's go to ubuntu.com. Then let's download the ISO. We're gonna download the latest version which updates every six months. So this is 23.10. Okay, and now it's downloading. Now, while it, while it does that, let's go to etcher.balena.io and let's download Etcher. Now, just download it for whatever platform you're going to use, if it's Windows, Mac, or Linux. In this case, it's Mac OS. And now we just wait for them to download. Okay, and so it has finished downloading, so now we just need to open Belena Etcher. Now we can close Firefox here. Okay, so... Let's now open Belena Etcher. Open. Okay, so now that we have opened Bolina Etcher, let's choose our ISO, which is this one, the Ubuntu ISO, and now let's select our flash drive, and let's click flash. Okay, it has completed. So now we can just close Belena Etcher. And now we need to partition the drive because we are doing a dual boot here instead of a full disk installation. So here in macOS, open Disk Utility. And now you may notice this um, screen over here. So what you wanna do is you want to click Partition over here in the corner. And what we want to do is we want to create a new partition. So below this partition table right here, you want to click the plus button, add partition, and you want to make this uh, uh, MS-DOS fat. And now, so I'm going to use exactly half of the disk for Ubuntu. If you want to use less or more, you can just adjust this um, slider over here, but I'm just going to do exactly half, which would be 250, right over here, perfect. So now we're just going to click, um, well, we're also going to rename it Ubuntu. We're going to apply and click partition. 
click continue. Okay, so it seems that it failed. So I guess we'll have to try that again. Okay. Okay, so this seems to have not worked. Okay. Then what we will attempt to do is instead partition through the Ubuntu installer. So let's reboot into Ubuntu. Now to get to the boot menu, uh, typically you would use the option key on a MacBook, but that could be F10, F12 on your traditional PC. For me, it's F9. For me, it's F9 on my main Linux computer. Okay, now we want to select EFI boot. Try or install Ubuntu. Okay, we have booted in. And the trackpad does not work, oh boy. Okay, so as you remember, uh, partitioning failed last time, so I turned off File Vault because File Vault encryption was on, and uh, I'm pretty sure that prevented partitioning. And then I tried again, and on macOS, it still wouldn't partition, but then I went to recovery mode, and it actually did create a separate partition, as you can see over here. Ubuntu, MS-DOS. So now we're going to reboot because I have my Ubuntu USB back in. Oh, and also, uh, you may remember Ubuntu didn't work. So I had Ubuntu 23.10 and I tried Ubuntu 22.04 LTS just to see if it would work. And it actually did. So that was interesting. So let's reboot into Ubuntu. Okay, and so as you can see, the cursor actually does work, which is interesting. So I'm not quite sure if this Mac is only compatible with the LTS releases or if support was just removed entirely for this Mac after 22.04. Not quite sure, but um, since it works, let's go through the installation. Now on other hardware that isn't this Mac, of course, uh, Linux will be fully supported, but this Mac in particular doesn't have a wide variety of operating system support in general. So let's run through an installation here. Okay, and so um, we're going to do a minimal installation. Basically the normal installation here in 22.04 is the full installation, which comes with office suites, games, all that kind of thing. The minimal installation is just the web browser and the basics. So I'm gonna select that. And I will install additional third-party media formats. Let's click continue. Okay, so here, since we want to dual boot, we'll select something else to partition, to do manual partitioning, then click continue. And here we go. So, uh, we need to look for the free space we made. Which is here, this is the free space right here, FAT32 as you can see. So we're going to select this. We're going to use this as an ext4 file system with the mount point of slash for root and click OK. OK. You want to specifically select uh, NVMe 3 here. This is the one that we selected. Uh, you do not want to erase the entire drive. So, this one, here we go, now, install now. Now we just click continue. And now uh, New York is the time zone, so I'm just gonna click continue. And the rest is just the installation process, so I'm gonna run through this real quick.
Okay, and it seems that the installation is complete, so now let's reboot. Okay, now remove your USB drive and press enter. And then hit the option key in order to get to the boot menu. And as you can see, now we have macOS here and we have Ubuntu. First, let's boot into macOS. And here it is. As you can see. And now, um, let's boot into Ubuntu. So let's reboot. Again, hit the option key. And this time, reboot into Ubuntu. Yeah. As you can see, we have successfully dual booted Ubuntu. So let's take a little look at Ubuntu. And here it is, right over here. So now you can just play around with it, use it. And we have successfully dual booted Mac OS and Ubuntu. Subscribe if you like my content and join the Penguin Bike Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.